the robots are freaking out. Hello, people on the other side of a screen. Today, I have the all new 2022 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. That's the off-road 4x4 version of the new Frontier. And this one's fully loaded. But what's more important is what's up underneath and under that hood. So let's get it up in the air and find out. And then we'll take it off-road. Ah, ooh, I just noticed the step-up plate says Frontier. Oh, wow, that's rugged. Sounds like a frying pan. It says Frontier on it, on both the front and the rear. Ooh, hidden ASMR, the best kind of ASMR. And a step that looks like it'll get ripped off the first time you do any serious hill climbing. It's got a tow package, 6,270 pounds to be exact for this truck right here. The first two things you notice when you look underneath this truck is that my glasses have smudges all over them. That's really bad. It has Bilstein shocks on the Pro 4X package. Yellow body, 4600 series, I presume. They might be specific just for the Pro 4X though, because it doesn't say 4600 series. Usually yellow bodies are 4600, but ooh, look at that, it looks like a rotten gourd. It's actually a bump stop. Could be a wasp nest too for some dickhead wasps that will sting you when you go off-roading. And this guy right here, that says Dana on the rear axle. It's got a Dana 44 rear axle with an electronic locker. Also a rear anti-sway bar that is conveniently at the appropriate height so it doesn't get snagged off-road. I appreciate that. The exhaust is all stainless steel, but look at this. It's got like a Australian size beer can calsonic resonator right here at the tip. I like that it utilizes this style exhaust flange though and doesn't have the two bolt ones that usually leak. The main muffler on the exhaust is also manufactured by Calsonic Kanzai, but look at this. It's got a burnt finish to the stainless steel. It's probably not intentional, but that's pretty. It's dual exhaust all the way up to that muffler as well. And you can see right here, a couple more resonators. And then things get a little wild where the pipe crosses over to go to the other bank of cylinders, which I'm leading to believe it's probably unequal length. In addition to the D41 third gen Frontier having a solid rear axle still with leaf springs, it has disc brakes in the back, whereas the Tacoma has drum brakes. Just something to point out. Also, I noticed there's a sticker on the drive shaft right above my head. The drive shaft has a sticker on it that says Dana Spicer. So it's kind of interesting. Not only did they make the rear diff for this thing, but they also took care of manufacturing and balancing this drive shaft for Nissan. That uh, charcoal canister looks kind of lonely just sitting out here all by itself next to that butt plug. It's wild to me that in 2022, this being a brand new model is still only a third generation of the Frontier. They don't change things up very often. That's because they build a pretty rock solid truck. And this one does have a fully boxed frame for the third generation and lots of skid plates for the Pro 4X model. Beefy. What is going on in the front of the fuel tank though? I mean, I guess it's a heat shield, but it's like a foot away from the exhaust over here. Maybe it's a stone shield to protect the front of the tank, which I highly doubt because that's some durable thick plastic. I do like the design of the center carrier bearing right here with this little brace that goes underneath it. It's really beefy and it keeps the drive shaft up out of the way so it doesn't get hung up off road. Look how big around, that's like the size of a telephone pole for a tiny town. Personally, I have owned two Toyota trucks in the past, an 87 and a 2011 TRD off-road. And I gotta say, I'm fangirling hard over this new Frontier, especially looking at it from underneath now. I'm kind of thinking this is a real competition for the Tacoma. They better watch out. Until I got to this part. Why is this just left raw steel for the front part of the drive shaft when everything else back here is painted? That doesn't make any sense. 
YouTube comment sections and internet forums love to hate on JATCO transmissions, especially the CVT kind. This truck does not have a CVT. It has a traditional nine speed automatic transmission with a torque converter. And it's developed by Mercedes Benz. It's a 9G Tronic. However, it technically isn't because it's only licensed by Mercedes to Nissan and then manufactured by JATCO. Other than the transmission pan being manufactured out of a nice ASMR plastic and not having a skid plate to protect it, I do actually like this transmission. Sadly, Nissan dropped the manual transmission option for the Frontier and that really breaks my heart. It's just Toyota and Jeep now that are in the game for the mid-sized truck market that has six-speed manuals available. Up front, there is a double wishbone independent front suspension with a coil over strut. Also, take note at the angle. They're cambered inward from the bottom up towards the frame. You do not get a front locker with the Pro 4X, but look how easy it is to access this front diff. I mean, it's just right there in case you wanna add one yourself. Another nice skid plate. Look at the side of that front anti-sway bar. That thing is girthy, especially right here at the end link, which is the size of a marker, a Sharpie. This is 25.4 millimeters in diameter. Ooh, that's pretty. This front skid plate actually has like a silver gloss pearl finish to it. That's, that's not necessary, but they did it and I like it. Let's get this thing out in the road and see how it stops. Okay, it's time for the braking test. Nobody behind me? Ready? Woo, shit! Those are really good brakes. Wow. Wasn't expecting that. Those, not bad. That braking was accomplished with a two-piston front caliper. They're a big, meaty two-pot. Don't let the number of pots confuse you. They're like the size of a Red Bull can. Probably bigger than that. I don't know, I don't drink Red Bull. And there's a 11.7 inch front rotor. Outside of that, you have a 17 inch simulated gunmetal beadlock wheel. I don't know about simulated beadlock. It more looks like simulated bedazzled. It's a simulated bedazzled wheel shiny. Outside of that, you have a 265 17-inch Hankook Dynapro AT2 tire. Wait, there is no plastic liner in the wheel well. And that's like baby poop brown, the paint inside there. The frame is painted though. Uh, in the rear, you have an 11.3-inch rear rotor with a single pot caliper. And the wheel and tire setup, it is square stanced with the front. In the name of science, I'm now going to give this thing the beans. I will disable my traction control because I like to get squirrely with the cheese whiz. I don't think you get squirrely of cheese whiz. I think you give cheese whiz to squirrelies and you make their tummies upset. I'm not going to use the manual mode because I'm not as smart as a robot. I'm also going to enable my heated steering wheel because warm fingers are capable fingers. Okay, give this thing a little assistance and let it eat. Ready? Go. Ooh, that was kind of aggressive for a second. And that's good. bad for being an NAV6. It feels like it gets taller when it starts going. It's it's not bad though. It's not bad. Especially considering this thing's like 4,700 pounds and change. Oh, it's hard getting in this truck and the lift. Hood struts. Good job, Nissan. Why can't anyone else figure that out? It doesn't open very far though. Wait, you pulled a Subaru, Nissan. This is not all painted under here. It's overspray. It's like green and yellow and gray. What is going on if manufacturer is not painting the underneath of the engine bay completely? It's yellowish over there and green over here. Under the hood of this tactical green metallic beast is Nissan's 
VQ38 Delta Delta. It is a 3.8 liter dual overhead cam, all aluminum direct injected V6 that produces 310 horsepower at 6,400 RPM and 281 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. Yet in 2022, there's again another different VQ engine. This one's a 3.8 liter flavor. They had a VQ38 naturally aspirated back in the day on the 330Z. It was the Nismo Superleggera 380Z or 350Z RS or something. I'll put a picture of it on the screen. That car was, that car was fire. Digging in a little bit deeper on this VQ38, it is, like I said, a direct injection engine, doesn't have port injection to help wash off the back of the valves is the issue that direct injection only engines have. This does have 11.0 to one compression ratio and something weird with the variable valve timing they call VVT-C-S. It has electronic control on the intake side of things, but on the exhaust side, it's hydraulically controlled. It is also an over squared engine that's 95 and a half to 88.4 millimeter bore and stroke. The engine cover is made out of rubber. Interesting. Plastic platinum on the top just kind of flops over one of the banks of cylinders. That's a pretty good size engine bay. I mean, a quarter of it is taken up by empty space by all the heat exchangers and radiators up here. But what I'm curious about is the prior generation Frontier, you could stuff a VK56 underneath the hood and it would fit. Now, I wonder if you can do that with this one. That would be kind of fun. I'm going to get straight to the point with this off-roading and start with the hill climb test. I think it sets the tone of how the vehicle is going to do off-road anyway by seeing how it tackles this. Now, I did review the two-wheel drive version of this truck. There's a link up above if you want to check that out and you can see how it did off-road. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to use four-wheel drive on this hill, even though it probably doesn't need it. Um, put it in four high. Now it does have a locking differential. However, you can only lock the rear diff in four low. So I wanted to see if it could do it in two high with the rear diff locked, but you can't do that. This thing has a 32.3 degree approach angle and 9.8 inches of ground clearance. But I'm concerned about these step up rails and that rear step. What is going on here? What is, why is it not letting me go any further than the bottom of the hill? Let me turn off trash control. What is, what is this? I'm in four high. Why, why won't I get up this far? The robots are freaking out. What the fuck? I got stuck at the bottom of the hill. Oh my god, this thing will not even climb this! The, why are the robots so intrusive on this truck? Put it in neutral. I'm gonna put it in four low. I'm gonna lock the rear diff. You gotta be moving under four miles per hour for the rear diff to lock. Okay, there we go. Rear diff is locked. Now let's see if you'll climb the hill. Oh! No problem whatsoever. Jeez Louise. Robots are getting angry. Why are the... The systems are so intrusive on this truck. Jeez. It made it up. No, 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 Nissan. Dial that back a notch. That's too much. It's like this thing is expecting a moron to drive it. And it's like, no, we must protect the truck. I know the first thing someone's going to say when a vehicle struggles to do something off road, they're going to blame it on me. But I want to say this. I do not lower the tire pressure on any vehicle I review. I keep them all at the OEM recommended tire pressure because it sets an even playing field across the board with the vehicles. I'm not trying to give any of them an advantage to make them better off-road. Now, uh, downhill does have hill descent. There's a button down here I gotta press. Let my foot off the brake. Yep, works good. It's quiet, it's a quiet system. Toyota's really noisy when you use their hill descent. It sounds like 
whales fucking in the ocean. This doesn't. It's nice and quiet. I get a feel that this thing is capable off-road, but very intrusive on the electronic aids. Camera, please. I don't want to drive off the edge here. It's not bad. It's, I'd say it's average for turning radius and four high. What is with these, these nanny systems though? It does get the job done. It's, it's not that it's not capable. It's letting me do it. It's just super, it's actually the way you probably should drive off road. It's being cautious, slow, so you don't bash and break stuff on the truck. My running boards are so close to the dirt. They just barely scrape, just barely. You're gonna hear it in a second. That's the one option I would definitely do without. Ready? Right there. That's great. Luckily, I got out and checked on them. The powder coating's tough on these things. Ooh, this is tippy. Ooh, this will make your butt pucker a little bit. To answer the question of every eight-year-old minded adult watching this, does it whip a good donut? Yep. It definitely makes the donut. Despite the over-aggressive robots, I have grown to like this new Frontier quite a bit. Styling-wise, it's one of my favorite looking trucks now in this class on the market. It lacks a manual transmission. That makes me sad. But other than that, I really like it. I, there's not a lot of complaints I have against it. I would love to see them offer a four-cylinder model for the lower trim grades and still offer a uh, four-wheel drive on the four-cylinder model. I'm literally having to crawl through here because so would engage the child safety locks. On-road, I thoroughly enjoy driving this truck. It's super comfortable on-road. It's so solid and just firm feeling. It's got heavy steering and it feels well-made. There's zero rattles in here when you're driving it on the road. It's, it's a nice truck. Off-road, Again, like I said, I feel this is great for a novice off-roader. This truck will keep you from destroying it off-road. The stability aids are very intrusive, but they still allow you to go places. Expert off-roaders, I'm sure there's a way to fully defeat those. Might require a little bit of modifying, but yeah, this is, this is a good truck. If you guys never seen one of my vehicle reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them on a one to five scale. And first up is the bean score as assessment of the feeling you get behind your belly button when you give it the beans. And this Frontier Pro 4X is getting a rating of 1.2 beans. It's an adequate amount of power for the truck. It's a little bit heavier compared to some of its competitors at 4,700 pounds and change but 310 horsepower, it's not too bad. Hello, I'm reporting to you live from the desert on the meatball score. Is there a rating of one to five meatballs based on a vehicle's ability to tackle these? And the 22 Frontier Pro 4X is getting a rating of 2 point five plus three is eight, 2.8 meatballs. It, it does all right. Uh, here's the thing, do not get the optional running boards, although they are strong as hell. I don't know what they coat those things in, moon dust, but you could literally probably take a knife to them and not even scratch them. I don't know what they coat them in. I do think that uh, I like this truck a lot. Okay, back to you, Studio Sarah. Next up though is the cookie score, as assessment of what you get for what you spend. And this truck, as it is equipped in the high $40,000 range, is getting a rating of 
2.5, it's flat even score. I think compared to its competitors, it's priced appropriately. This one is completely loaded up with a bunch of options. The Pro 4X itself, you can get for about $37,000, which I think is great value. But this one is going up in the territory of a TRD Pro Tacoma or a Gladiator Rubicon. And at that price, I just think the lights are gonna turn off eventually so it doesn't kill the battery. <laughs> Next is the mechanic score. As assessment on a one to five scale based on how difficult a vehicle would be to work on, five being the easiest in the world, one being abysmal nightmare. And this truck right here, it's getting a rating of 3.9 wrenches. I think this would be a fairly simple truck to work on. I was impressed when I was standing underneath, I was looking at how everything was constructed and how easy it would be to remove stuff like the transmission, the cross member completely unbolts. And uh, underneath the hood, the fact that the hood doesn't lift all the way up, that kind of impedes your ability to get in there. But other than that, it looks like there was some actual thought that went into technicians and mechanics on maintaining this thing. Lastly though, is the Penguin score. And that is assessment of how much I personally like a vehicle. And this truck right here, is getting a rating of 4.4 penguins. I liked this way more than I thought I was going to. And this is kind of having me take second thoughts on the Tacoma as being my favorite mid-sized truck. Uh, I really, really am impressed by this new Frontier. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you guys soon with another. Bye.